Joining me now is former House Speaker and Fox News contributor Newt Gingrich. He's also the author of the book March to the Majority. Uh, Newt, good morning to you. I have to bring up something to you. We talked, we talked earlier about Ronald Reagan. And there is this great piece in the Wall Street Journal, and the title of it is, What Would Ronald Reagan Tell the GOP Debaters? And in particular, it says uh, that the left sees people as groups. But if you're a Republican, you see people as who they are, which is individuals. What are you expecting tonight, and what do you want to see? Well, what I'd like to see is a focus on what they would do if they were president to help the country, and where they would take the country on issues like affordability, uh, on issues like the border, you just had a terrific piece on New York, and as usual, Congressman Maliotakis was terrific. Uh, you know, there are really substantive things we need to be dealing with. The piece you just did with the mayor of San Francisco, San Francisco is collapsing as a city. Stores are leaving. Uh, ironically, uh, federal employees are being told not to go to the Nancy Pelosi federal office building because the neighborhood's too dangerous. There are a lot of serious real challenges. What I'm afraid will happen is that everybody will get involved in talking about uh, President Trump's legal situation, and he'll, t you know, while he's not there, he'll take over half the debate time. I think that would be a mistake. I hope that the questioners don't go down that road, and I hope the candidates don't go down that road. Well, you know, it's interesting, too, because that same piece I mentioned about Ronald Reagan, it also says the current cast of White House contenders are engaged in unconstructive outrage rather than offering a clarifying pathway to reclaiming our government. I thought that was a really good line. There is some controversy uh, happening around this I want to ask you about. So GOP presidential candidates Larry Elder and Perry Johnson are now threatening to sue the RNC because they're not allowed on the debate stage tonight. They say they've met the requirements. Uh, and then you've also got the Miami mayor, Francis Suarez. He didn't make the stage. He says, I am sorry that this debate will not include my perspectives from the largest growing voting bloc in our country, uh, young conservative Hispanics. And then G Governor Glenn Youngkin, by the way, is still dodging questions from Fox News Digital about a possible run for president. Listen to this, Newt. You're ruling out a 2024 run? But we're, we're focused on 2023, and there's been there has been no confusion. The most important election in in the nation, I believe, is Virginia this year. A lot to react to, Newt. Go ahead. Well, first of all, I think Governor Youngkin's doing the right thing. He has a huge tax cut in comparison to the Democrats who want to spend it on government. He has a very strong uh, voting program <clears throat> underway to get Georgia, I mean, to get Virginia Republicans to go out and vote early. Uh, he's really working to win control of the uh, legislature. And I think that's where his focus ought to be. Uh, and I don't think this is a time for him to try to be in a debate stage. The other guys, I mean, I don't, I don't know whether any of the three you mentioned actually met the requirements. I suspect if they did, they'd be on the stage. But the requirements were very clear. They were, they were outlined very early. I think that uh, uh, Chairwoman Ronna McDonald did a good job of saying, look, if you meet these standards, you'll be on the stage. If you don't meet them, you're not going to be on the stage. So I'd like to know, where's the evidence the two of them have that they met the standard and are somehow being excluded. I don't know. I, my guess is they didn't actually meet the standard. That's a great point there, Newt. Uh, Tiana Ladesh is on set with me. She's got a question about Ronna, actually, for you. Hey there. So I know that you endorsed her for her second term as RNC chairwoman. And even if you're arguing that these rules were clear, would you argue that these rules were not gamed? For instance, you have uh, Governor Doug Burgum, who's on the stage, who essentially bought his voters, or who, who bought his donors, right? Offering this, if you donate $1 to my campaign, you get $20 in a gift card. Does that feel like it's, it's an honest interpretation of the rules? Do you think that's what Chairwoman McDaniel wanted from this? Or is he just gaming the rules? And do those <laughs> need to change next time? No, look, I, I, there's, there's no question uh, that Governor Burgum, who's, who is a billionaire, is gaming the rules. On the other hand, he is gaming the rules. He's not outside the rules. He's not complaining about the rules. He said, look, if this is what the deal is, I'm going to meet it. And the rules included having enough recognition to have a certain percentage of votes in, in the polls and being able to have enough donors. 
So he meant to I mean you you can't complain if an entrepreneur who's very aggressive decides that he will do within the rules be creative. Now, whether or not Burgum has a future, I don't know. He has very strong opinions. He 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 was probably very frustrated on Meet the Press the other day when eight of the nine questions were about Trump and he's mm -hmm. there, he's trying to talk about what Governor Burgum will do for America and uh, the NBC moderator kept coming back again and again to Donald Trump, and that's what I hope will not happen tonight. Let's hear from the eight candidates that are going to be on that stage and what they have to say to the American people. By the way, before you go, I do want to ask you about the former president. Uh, this Georgia case, that judge that's overseeing <clears throat> it is allowing cameras in the courtroom for the arraignment. Uh, he's going to surrender to Fulton County uh, officials tomorrow, likely tomorrow night. His bond is now set, we know, at $200,000. Here I go asking you about the former president, but uh, can you respond to that before you run? Yeah, I think the whole thing in Fulton County is in total outrage. I think the indictment itself is an outrage. I think it's an absurdity. I think to take a law which is designed for the mafia and for drug dealers and to apply it to politics should frighten every single American. We don't have the rule of law. We have the rule of power. And they're trying to use their power in a way which I think is totally unconstitutional and which the Georgia legislature should have a special session and should investigate exactly what her behavior was. Why did she move on Monday? Uh, why did everything get pushed up? Why did she release the grand jury findings before the grand jury found them? Uh, I mean, they literally were released before they were voted on. So I, I have a deep sense that the Fulton County case is a total fraud, and my guess is, in the end, the Supreme Court will throw it out. Newt Gingrich, thank you so much for being here. A big thank day, you. a lot to look forward to, a lot of issues. It's always great to have you on the show, Newt. Thank you. Thank you. All right.